Hello, my name is Janine, and I completed this research study with Dr. Megan McCarty for my thesis and also through the SURPASS program at Simmons. Overall, the rise of equality movements such as the Women's March and Black Lives Matter highlight that both race and gender bias are receiving more attention in the minds of Americans today. Although racism and sexism are both seen as prominent issues in society, the two tend to be studied relatively separately with little psychological or quantitative understanding of how they relate. The current study investigated perceptions of the link between racism and sexism, specifically both hostile and benevolent sexism. Research on prejudice has found that racism and sexism are linked. Therefore, an individual who holds racist beliefs is more likely to hold sexist beliefs and vice versa. Even among laypersons in society, there is the assumption of this link between racism and sexism. Research on this assumption has used measures targeting hostile forms of sexism only. By only exposing participants to hostile sexism, the researchers missed a key component of sexism as a whole. According to ambivalent sexism theory, sexism consists of two contrasting but related ideologies, hostile and benevolent sexism. Hostile sexism involves overtly negative beliefs about women, characterizing women as easily offended or unappreciative of men. On the other hand, benevolent sexism involves somewhat positive attitudes towards women, but that view women in restricted and traditional gender roles. For example, that women need to be protected by men or that women should be placed on a pedestal. Despite having such an inoffensive tone, Benevolent sexism, like hostile sexism, has negative impacts on women, such as negative positive effects and negative social implications. Despite this, men and women tend to rate a benevolent sexist source more positively than a hostile sexist source, and even women tend to prefer benevolent sexism over a neutral control. The aim of the current study is to extend previous research investigating perceptions of the association between hostile sexism and racism by also examining perceptions of benevolent sexism and racism. Across our dependent variables, we expected that a hostile sexist would be perceived as more racist and rated more negatively compared to both a neutral control and a benevolent sexist. We also expected a neutral control to be rated as more likely to be racist and rated more negatively compared to a benevolent sexist. And last, we expected that a man would be perceived as more likely to be racist and rated more negatively across our DVs compared to a woman. To cover the true purpose of the study, participants were told we were interested in how virtual learning impacts comprehension and that they would be required to interact with another participant, their partner. In reality, this partner was a confederate controlled by computer programming. And when participants were asked to share information about themselves, the information they received in return to get to know their partner a little bit better was manipulated. So participants either saw a neutral response, a hostile sexism response, or a benevolent sexist response. The partner was either male or female, and the participant's own gender was measured either male or female. So the question in which the sexism condition was manipulated was please describe what type of people you typically work with when learning virtually and what have you liked or disliked about these experiences. So our Confederate partner expressed different beliefs based on the sexism condition. So all participants saw this first part of the response and then the response differed based on hostile sexist beliefs, benevolent sexist beliefs, or no sexist beliefs.
partner gender was also displayed to the participant. And the gender of the participant was measured through a question asking about their gender identity. So the study included a variety of dependent measures. Um, for the sake of time, I'll only be able to discuss two today. The first is perceived racism. In the second, we explored a relatively new me measure, perceived support for the Black Lives Matter movement. We were able to enroll 528 MTurk participants, and both our gender and racial demographics were fairly representative of the population as a whole. So for the purpose of this presentation, I'll only be discussing results relating to our primary hypotheses. However, my email will be at the end of the presentation if anyone is interested in any of the other results or any of the other dependent measures that we included in the study. So for perceived racism, participants in the hostile sexism condition perceive the partner as more likely to be racist than participants in both the benevolent sexism condition and the neutral control. However, there were no significant differences between participants in the benevolent sexism condition and neutral sexism condition may indicate that participants do not view benevolent sexism as being more likely to indicate racism compared to a non-sexist individual, which is concerning as we know that sexism and racism are indeed associated. Next, there was a significant interaction. So there were no partner gender differences on perceived racism when participants were in the benevolent sexism condition However, when participants were in the hostile sexism condition, the male partner was rated as more likely to be racist than the female. On the other hand, in the neutral control condition, the female partner was rated as more likely to be racist compared to the male partner. However, this effect should be taken with some caution as it was not seen, not seen across our other dependent variables. For support for the Black Lives Matter movement, participants in the hostile sexism condition perceive the partner as less likely to support the Black Lives Matter movement compared to both participants in the benevolent sexism condition and the neutral sexism condition. Additionally, participants in the benevolent sexism condition perceive the partner as less likely to support the BLM movement compared to participants in the neutral sexism condition. Partner gender also significantly impacted perceived support of the BLM movement. So the female partner was perceived as more likely to support the movement compared to the male partner. Overall, we found that hostile and benevolent sexism were perceived quite differently by participants, with benevolent sexists being perceived as less likely to be biased. Overall, Understanding who and what individuals identify as bias is a first step in being able to find ways to intervene. If benevolent sexism is seen as less prejudice than hostile sexism, individuals may be less likely to protest it and it may be more likely to perpetuate and exist among society. Additionally, perceiving an individual who is benevolently sexist as just as likely to be racist as a non-sexist may place individuals at greater risk for experiencing racism. This may be particularly true for women of color as their identity places them at the unique intersection between racism and sexism. Benevolent sexism due to its rather inoffensive tone may be more freely admitted, making it a potential warning sign that that individual may also hold racist beliefs. Not having an understanding of this relationship could allow for this potential warning sign to be missed, further placing the individual at risk for experiencing prejudice. Although the study had many interesting findings, there are always new directions to go. So one future direction that I found particularly interesting is to manipulate the race of the partner. So for our study, the race of the partner was not known. 
but it would be interesting to know if the hostile versus benevolent sexist partner was perceived differently if the individual was a person of color compared to a white individual. Overall, the current study brings awareness to the differing perceptions between hostile and benevolent sexism association with racism, with the hopes of prompting future research involving this understudied relationship between racism and sexism, especially benevolent sexism. Thank you very much. Again, if anyone is interested in any of the other results, or dependent measures or have any questions, my email is located here. Also, if anyone is interested in any of the really interesting articles I use to inform the research, I'm more than happy to share. Thanks again.